Hello, welcome to the NPTEL online certification course on deep learning. I will just give you a brief introduction to this course, what we are going to cover and uh, who are the target audience of this deep learning course. Deep learning you might know is a particular case of a traditional turning learning mechanism called machine learning. So, to say what is deep learning, first let us try to see what does the term learning mean. Say for example, when you see a cow, you can always recognize or understand that is a cow. Similarly, when an apple is shown to you, immediately you can recognize that it is an apple. But how do you know what is a cow or what is an apple? or what is it that differentiate between these two. That is where the learning comes into picture. In fact, we are learning every day. We have started learning from our birth or people also say that we are learning even before our birth, when we were in our mother's womb. But what is it that we learn that differentiates the example that I gave just now between a cow and an apple. Maybe unknowingly, we try to find out some sort of properties or some descriptors or also called features from the objects that we see around us or what we hear and various such things. So, coming to the objects or animals, say cow or apple, one, the first one that differentiates between these two is the shape the shape of a cow and the shape of an apple is totally different. The second one that differentiates between these two is the color, the intensity and the texture. So, maybe unknowingly we have learnt some of these features, maybe its shape, its color, its intensity or even texture and using these informations, we have created some description of the animal or some description of the object and it is this description which is stored in our brain. So, next time when an unknown object or unknown animal is shown to us, immediately we try to find out similar such descriptors or all those descriptors or features in the form of a feature vector and we try to match these descriptors or features with what we have learnt or what is stored in our brain. And if we find that the descriptors are similar, then we say that they are of same group or we can identify a cow as a cow and we can distinguish between a cow and a dog or we can distinguish between a cow and an apple. So, in tradi traditional machine learning approach, it used to work in two different steps. In the first stage, we used to find out or we used to compute some of these features which we used to say handcrafted features and using these handcrafted features in the second phase, we tried to learn, we tried to train the uh, machine learning model which could gather information of the object from these features. And after the model was properly trained, then given, given similar such features from an unknown object or an unknown animal, the model could identify what that unknown animal or unknown object is. Next, when you come to deep learning, then the uh, people started thinking that okay, whatever features that we have said to be proper to distinguish between different objects, maybe those are not the actual features because we never say or it is very difficult to say that actually we are looking at those features to identify the object. So, people started believing that let the machine itself understand what features or what to look for to identify different objects or to identify different animals or to identify different signals that we get all around us. So, that is the concept of deep learning where you feed the input data as raw data, not the features and the output of the model will be the decision that for which the machine or the model has been trained. So, 
very often these deep learning models are actually implemented us using neural networks. So, when you, when you talk about machine learning, traditional machine learning, there are different approaches like Bayesian learning rule, uh, neural network, linear regression and all those different things. When you come to deep learning, it is usually the neural network or deep neural network. There are different neural network models like convolution neural network, recurrent neural network, Boltzmann machine and all those different kinds of models. So, when you say deep, how deep it is depends upon how many layers of the neural network we have. And in every layer of the neural network, you get some abstract representation of the input to that particular player. So, whatever is information is available to input of a particular layer, output of that layer will be the representation of the same information in some other level of abstraction. Say for example, in case of deep neural network or in say convolutional neural network, the input may be the raw image and the output input to a particular layer might be the raw image and output of that particular layer may be the pixel abstraction representing that what are the edges or what are the corners present in that particular image. That may be input to the next layer and output of the next layer may be some information about how these edges are oriented, how these edges are organized, which may be input to the next layer and output of that particular layer might be representation of say nose, representation of ears, representation of eyes and all that, which is input to the next layer and output of that particular layer may be the facial representation, which may be used for face recognition. So, this is just an example. For different types of neural networks, deep neural networks, they work with different such mechanisms, but the mechanisms are more or less similar. So, when you train these neural networks or deep neural networks for any application, during training phase, there has to be some error criteria. That means, when I am training, maybe initially the output of this model may not be what I expect for some given known data. So, that leads to some error. So, the way you train the neural network is by a mechanism called back propagation mechanism or gradient descent approach. So, in this particular course, we initially we will have few lectures uh, dedicated for traditional machine learning. We will talk about feature extraction, we will talk about Bayesian rules, we will talk about neural networks like multi-layer neural networks, uh, we will talk about linear machines and then we will move to the deep learning or deep neural network models. We will also talk about the error functions and the different optimization techniques through which the error can be minimized and in the process the network or the model is trained. And once the model is trained, that can be used to solve different applications like computer vision applications, speech recognition applications, medical data processing, data analytics and the applications are many. We will also see that using today's deep learning techniques, it is also possible to synthesize images, it is also possible to synthesize video which are almost like natural image or natural video. So, that is the model of this deep learning which is known as generative model. So, to train such a generative model, I must have something called an adversary. The adversary will tell the generator that okay, what you have generated or what you have synthesized does not look like the natural image or the natural video. So, there is something wrong. So, that is an error mechanism. This error is fed back to the generative model, so that the generative model improves itself. It learns a better representation or later, uh, better uh, synthesis of the natural images or natural video. And once it is properly trained, then that particular generative model can be used to generate synthetic image or synthetic video. 
So, this generative model along with the adversary that is what is known as GAN or generative adversarial network will also dedicated few lectures on this model itself. To attend this course, it is better that if you have some preliminary knowledge of the linear algebra, some preliminary idea of signal processing and also differential calculus. Though I will cover all the topics from sufficient basics that even if you do not have the advanced ideas, the advanced knowledge of all these linear algebra or differential calculus or the signal processing, uh, hopefully will not face much of problem to understand the topics that I will cover. So, this uh, particular course has been designed for the undergraduate students as well as the postgraduate students and even the practicing engineers, the practicing scientists from industries or the research laboratories will also find this course to be useful. Thank you and welcome again to this online certification course on deep learning. Thank you.